Who sent the suicide drones to Russia? This is a question that has gripped governments across the globe. Ukraine and the West claim it is Iran, but Moscow and Tehran have vehemently denied these accusations. Now the European Union says it has evidence against Iran, and based on this, it is readying sanctions against the country. The shipment of drones, if done by Iran, violates a UN resolution. Russia is a permanent member of the UN Security Council, so it has the right to veto, which means it can easily block these sanctions. This comes after the UN Security Council met behind the doors. The United States, France and the UK have requested the Security Council to voice an alarm. These sanctions, if imposed on Tehran, will be on top of the barrage of sanctions already imposed against that country. This development is also likely to have an impact on the nuclear deal, which has already hit an impasse. Earlier on Monday, residents in Kiev woke up to the sounds of explosions and sirens. Multiple blasts were heard throughout the city and at least five people were killed in these blasts. Even weeks before this attack, Ukraine had accused Russia of using Iranian drones. Kiev claims more than 220 Iranian-made drones have been shot down in just about one month. These drones in question are designed by Iran-based Shahid Aviation Industries. They are triangle-shaped weapons commonly known as kamikaze drones. The Shahid-136 is a loitering drone that is designed to neutralize ground targets. It is fairly, it's a fairly new weapon which uh, in fact uh, has come into service just last year. Its speed and size makes it difficult to track and destroy it. It flies at around 185 kilometers an hour and weighs 200 kilograms. Well, so this is a raging global controversy. For more on this story, we earlier spoke to Vion correspondent Trent Murray, who is in Berlin. Well, they are talking very closely with their Ukrainian counterparts, and there is very clear evidence from what the Ukrainians have presented that these are indeed Shahid-136 drones. Now, these are these Iranian-made drones, as you said. Around 220 of them have been managed to be intercepted by the Ukrainians. Uh, and from that, there is very clear evidence of exactly what it is. We have got photographs of the drones in the air. We have got um, d damaged drones and parts on the ground. Uh, and when you pick through all of that as a crash investigator, you can very clearly see what it is. So despite Tehran and Moscow denying that they've sort of created this new axis of weapon shipments in this war, uh, the evidence on the ground does point to the contrary, and that is why the EU is taking a very tough stance today. We do expect in the next couple of hours for them to announce this fresh wave of sanctions against Tehran, uh, targeting both senior military officials and the drone company itself. Of course, all of this comes uh, as Ukraine continues to really closely monitor its airspace, concerned that these drones will continue to be flown into Ukrainian um, civilian infrastructure. We understand from reporting around 2,400 of these drones have been sold to Russia, uh, so clearly there's still a lot more potentially to come, and that is why the Ukrainians are really calling for air defence to help them protect their cities uh, and their infrastructure like power, power grids and, and power electricity stations. In what can be perceived as a softening of a non-military intervention policy in the Ukraine-Russia war, Israel has now offered to help Ukrainians develop air attack alerts for civilians. The latest help by Israel comes after Kiev appealed for countermeasures against Iranian-made drones used by Russia. However, Ukraine has asked for systems that would shoot down the drones instead. But Israel's defense minister has said Israel is firm on not supplying Kiev with any weapons. Emphasize that Israel stands with Ukrainian people and with the West. Yeah, we maintain a policy of supporting Ukraine via humanitarian aids. However, I'd, for operational and regional consideration, uh, I don't see us sending uh, offensive military equipment. 
Israel has largely stayed on the sidelines since Russia's invasion of Ukraine began uh, earlier in February this year as it does not want to damage its relationship with the Kremlin. While Israel has condemned the Russian invasion, it has refused multiple Ukrainian requests for weapons and has refrained from imposing strict economic sanctions on Russia. For more on this, uh, Vion correspondent Jody Cohen earlier sent us this report from Ranana. With these two calls today between Ukraine and Israel, it's not likely to change Israel's decision not to provide Ukraine with weapon systems. That's because under the current circumstances, Russia is still in control in Syrian airspace. And Israel needs to coordinate with Russia to stop Iran from getting closer to its border. However, Israel has said that it would approve an additional defensive aid package for Ukraine and has offered to help develop an early warning rocket, missile and drone alert system to protect Ukrainian civilians. Gantz also suggested a need for greater international cooperation to build an intelligence coalition and a credible military threat to stop Iran, including from supplying Russia with weapons. This is Jody Cohen for Weon, World is One. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.